I can pray if you want. Oh, Jesus, thank you for this morning. Thank you for these brothers of mine. Thank you that once again we're in your presence, studying your word, getting to know you better, drawing closer to you. Pray you'd speak to us this morning. And show us something we've never seen before. Give us insight and wisdom and revelation on what you've spoken through this author. Pray this in your name. Amen. Okay, in Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. Am I saying that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Every time I read that to myself, I'm like, and then the, and the, uh, and the uh, Ananias, the Lord called him in a vision. Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street. Am I reading right? On Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him and restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I've heard many, many reports about this man and, and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go. This man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it, placing his hands on Saul. He said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, he has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. Do we want to do one more pass? Uh, sure. I read it like six times yesterday, so I'm good, but yeah, whatever you guys want to do. I could stand another, yeah. Okay. Sure. I'll I'll take I'll take a pass at it. Um in Damascus there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, Go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said, Go, this man is, is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their kings and before the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord, Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength.
Good morning. What was that? Are we doing another reading? We can if you want. We, we did uh, 10 through 19. Okay, I'll do one more. Cool. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, and he replied, Here I am, Lord. And the Lord told him, Get up and go to the street called Straight. And at Judah's house, look for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. And he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and place his hands on him so that he may see again. But Ananias replied, Lord, I have heard from many people about this man, how much harm he has done to the, your in Jerusalem. <laughs> and here he has authority from the chief priests to imprison all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, because this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before Gentiles and kings and the people of Israel. For I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias departed and entered the house, placed his hand on Saul, and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from his eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptized and after taking some food, his strength returned. Interestingly, I had a couple ideas or thoughts. Yesterday I was talking about my skepticism over Paul's credibility. And this is like the second thing that kind of shoots that down. Being, hey, this random guy in, her, in this town has a vision from God himself. And God says, look, he is going to be my New Testament prophet, essentially. And then, of course, I like this. Yeah, I've already invited him over to your house, putting you on the spot. <coughs> that seems kind of amusing to me. I wonder if um, Ananias, when he went to the house that Saul was at, because he placed his hands on Saul, said he sent him that he may see again and be, and be filled with the Holy Spirit. I, I wonder if Ananias told Paul, Oh, and by the way, God told me that he's going to show you how much you must suffer for Jesus. I'm guessing he did. Didn't say it here. It doesn't say that Ananias says that, but right. if, you hear, if you hear from the Lord, you're probably going to tell the guy that what God said about you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Paul, oh man, I wonder, I wonder what he thought about that. It made me think of all the all the tribulation that he's going to experience going into the future. He's going to get stoned. 
I think he eventually gets crucified upside down. Paul? No. Paul got... Or was that Peter? That was Peter. Peter was crucified upside down. Paul was actually like just run through by Nero himself, I think, from what I've heard. Or had his head head hacked off by Nero. Yeah, something something horrific. Yeah. <laughs> something unpleasant. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's what it made me think of. Show him how many things he must suffer. I could check. But was Paul? He said he was stoned. Was he also stoned? He was. He well. He wasn't. He didn't die. He was. I don't remember when, which letter this was. He claims to have been uh, stoned, left for dead, and escaped. Oh. Thrown in jail many times. And I'm pretty. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, I'm not. I'm pretty sure I'm not confusing that with somebody else, but. I'm not sure. What what really stuck out to me, I, I read this like six times yesterday and didn't really get this too much thought, but the the metaphor of the scales over his eyes seems, it seems like it's probably there to convey something. It's kind of, it's kind of clunky. It kind of comes out of nowhere. It's like, oh, why is why can't you just see? Why do why do scales have to fall from his eyes as if it had been scales? It makes makes me think of the the dark one, the, the demonic, the snake in the garden. And maybe I'm reading too deep into it, but maybe it's a maybe maybe referring something like. It's the the evil one that makes that blinds you and I and I give you sight. Hmm. Interesting. So it's like Some a cold blooded <laughs> reptile. Hmm. Yeah. So when you say scales, it's kind of like the the molting process, like molting skin, kind of coming off of his eyes. Yeah, it's um, the way I think about it is like a, it's just a, it's a release from the grip of the of the of the dark one. It's you know Jesus put it one time, hmm. and you know specifically the you know the the snake that tempted Adam and Eve in the garden, which caused all all of these problems in the first place. You know I think there's a reason why it was a snake. Here we go. Yes. I have my I have my trusty Fox's Book of Martyrs. Paul, the apostle who was called <laughs> Saul after his great travail and unspeakable labors in promoting the gospel of Christ, suffered also in this first persecution under Nero. Abdias declareth that under his execution Nero sent two of his esquires, Phariga and Parthemius, to bring him word of his death. They, coming to Paul, instructing the people, desired him to pray for them that they might believe, who told them that shortly after they should believe and be baptized at his sepulchre. This done, the soldiers came and led him out of the city to the place of execution where he, after his prayer made, gave his neck to the sword. So. So even up. Yeah, beheaded. But up to his death, he was still leading people to Christ. It's like, hey, uh, tomorrow's the day, buddy. And he's like, okay, do you want to be Christians? Oh, sure, okay. That's wild. (laughs) He prayed for his executioners? He prayed with his executioners. Or the messengers that told him. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that was that was the one thing that stood out. One of the things that stood out to me is like says the you know Jesus is basically telling 
Ananias, like, this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their kings, before the people of Israel. It's like, you know, coming from, I think if it came from any other, like, even apostle, you know, I think, I don't think he would have, they would have been able to reach, you know, some of these people, you know, the Gentiles and the other kings and, you know, like you're saying, right up to his death, you know, praying with his executioners and, you know, reaching all these different people because, like, I don't know, there is something to say, I think, about, like, Saul's conversion and, like, who he was before and then the power of that kind of testimony and witness to a certain group of people. Mm. It's hard to refute. Right. That something otherworldly happened to this man. And it's almost like it gives them hope of like, hey, I was like this man and he he has changed. You know, so what's hindering me from changing as well? Hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Gives hope to us to wretches. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. Well, and then it just kind of, for me, opens, like, my eyes, like, you know, whatever struggles that I've gone through or are currently going through, you know, how <laughs> how my relationship with God gets me through those, and you know, it's not for nothing or just the sake of, like, I kind of think of it as, like, It's Jesus will call me his chosen instrument to reach a certain people or people struggling with the same stuff that I struggle with kind of thing. You know, so that was something that I heard was just like we are we are the chosen instrument to reach, you know, a certain people that maybe somebody else couldn't reach. Wow. Mm. Based on our own sufferings, I guess, yeah. And therefore, we should be thankful for our sufferings. Right. And then boast in our weakness. writing all this down that's what Paul means when he says boasting or weakness (laughs) again I'm reminded I just have these verses pop out in my head of for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. And now I need to find that reference. To do good works. Ephesians 2.10. So God knew about the suffering 
and we would endure as well. Yeah. That being part of his, his plan that enables us to do to do these good works and to reach the people that need to be reached. And it's like that word, you know, instrument is still like sticking out to me because it's like a chosen instrument. And like, I'm not thinking of like a musical instrument. You know, it's like a surgical instrument, something that's like really precise, a tool that's used for a specific purpose. Um, so like, yeah, I don't know. That was cool to me to just see that it's like a chosen instrument. It's like there, there may be other, <coughs> other tools or other instruments that, that are available to but he chose he chose Saul because there's a certain purpose or you know design to him to reach these other you know to carry out his purpose in a certain way you know you could use a you could use a hatchet to hack somebody's leg off but a, be a saw. <laughs> You know, kind of thing. Yeah, but that's pretty morbid. <laughs> <laughs> but true. Uh, <clears throat> I was. Um, I heard a sermon this week, and he said something like, "He spoke. He, he was talking about what we were talking about, and it was something like, God has." created you for a specific purpose like you're like what you're saying like you're a tool that or des designed in a specific way unique way and only you can fulfill that purpose on this earth and God doesn't like if you don't step into that purpose God doesn't just take somebody to fill your place and then you know mold them to fulfill your specific purpose. It's just a gap in the kingdom <laughs> that's never filled. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, but it kind of, that's kind of what we're talking about here. It's interesting. So, so are you saying like, like if, if somebody within the kingdom, you know, doesn't, doesn't fulfill their purpose, like, you're saying that like that's a gap because nobody else can fit that fit that purpose exactly or yeah hmm. yeah and I don't know like to what extent that gap manifests but it's a gap like and maybe you know maybe so if someone's leg does has to have to get cut off maybe it, you know it has to be with an axe instead of a saw. <laughs> sort of thing. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe the leg gets cut off anyway, but, but it's a lot more painful, you know. Right. Right. Uh, That's cool. The I think what what you just described is the is the opposite of nihilism. Um, <laughs> which which I think is really prevalent in our culture today. Uh, nihilism, nihilism being like essentially okay. Well, if I die, uh, the world's not going to be any different at all. I'm, I make no impact. Anything I do has no impact. And, and <laughs> I had a, a friend that really, hit, you know, he goes through bouts of depression, but he's always saying stuff like that. Life, life is essentially meaningless, and he he can't see it, can't see the the purpose in life. And I think at the bottom of that is something like in a misunderstanding of what ultimately of what God is, and it's it, and it's kind of a soft, um, 
it's kind of a soft way of making yourself into a god. Mm. It's like, well, if I can't if I can't achieve this this some kind of glorious end to my life, like a Julius Caesar, or like a, you know, some historical figure, <clears throat> then what's the point? And yeah, it's just it's just such, such a wrong way to think about it. But I I really do I think it's more common than religious belief in our culture, in a way. Hmm. Um, anyway, that was kind of a a caveat. It's made me think of my friend Mike from high school. Such a nihilist. But that's, that's why that's why I love this. It's, it's the it's an antidote to to nihilism. Mm-hmm. Do you think people and, are? And I think it's true. Nihilism? What was that? Do you think people are closet nihilists without really knowing it? Yeah, I think a couple weeks ago we we were talking about the um, how did I put it that like the the animate the philosophy that animates people's um, lives without without them really knowing it. Mm. I think most people don't. I mean, most most people don't have a sense of the metaphysical at all to to think about. Oh well, oh religion is just a, you know to to. It's a millennia-old invention designed to to uh, control people. You know, wh- whatever the whatever may be, whoever may be in power at the time. <laughs> and I'm like, you you don't know anything about the history of Christianity because <laughs> 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 it was the exact opposite is true. And yeah, that's that's my issue with with all these. Yeah, I mean, I. It's it's just easier. It's easier to go through life and, and not ever have a sense of of the, the divine. Have a sense of you know a, a a greater purpose, which ultimately I think is is God's will. That's why I, every day my my uh, common theme is uh, like through prayer on my own, through meditation, whatever. Is I want I don't want my will. I want God's will, and Every day is just trying to figure out, like, how do how do I get closer to that? How do I get closer to that ultimate truth? But I don't know. Most most of the people I know personally don't they don't think like that. It's just like, mm-hmm. eh, what's my next dopamine hit? And I'm gonna go drink. I'm gonna go smoke weed. You know, whatever whatever right. it is. Right. And I and I think we can. I think most most people go through life just titillating themselves with with that sort of, you know, superficial, um, short term happiness. That may, and then, mm-hmm. you know, I, I just think it's very depressing. Like I, that, I mean, that was kind of a tangent. I'm not sure if that had anything to do with, <laughs> with this, but it's all connected. Yeah. Yeah. It's all connected because if you are, if you are living a life apart from God, um, you're still suffering, and, and you need a way to 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 escape or to somehow remedy that suffering. And it, it turns into all of those things that you described. <clears throat> no, it's not a tangent. I don't think at all. What are you an instrument for? Yeah, that's really the question. Yeah, that's and mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's like feel free to answer it, <laughs> or look for the answer, or pray for the answer. Uh, um, something that's been on my heart a lot as it pertains to this instrument thing, which is not a. Uh, the instrument part hasn't been been in my head, but it's the importance of engaging our talents and investing our talents in into this kingdom of God's will. Like whatever they are, God has given us all gifts, um, and it's the, the little, it's like the little mini tools that are on the tool. Like, and and it's important for us to really one. Um, invest in in 
that tool, that gift that we've been given. So like practicing, practicing it, making it better, um, cultivating it, and then and then sharing it with, with others, you know, um, and taking risks. And um, like I, I did that, I did that yesterday. And I I went and, and led a worship service at the jail, and I I was a little fr- I was freaked out by it, <laughs> and I was part of me was like, uh, just pull the plug, don't go. They're not expecting you anyway. You can't get a hold of the, the main person there. They're probably they're probably don't, mm-hmm. and no one's gonna come anyway, even if you do it. And like, um, but I was like, no, I, no, I just need to go. I need to go. <laughs> I went, but I don't know. <laughs> Stuff like that I've been trying to do. I feel like it's strengthening my faith. Oh, wow. How, how did that go? It went okay. There were a few guys that came. Um, there was some, some cool moments. And, you know, God, I, I believe God was present and was speaking to us and Touching our hearts, so it was good. Wow, that's really cool. And it made me get a PA. I've been wanting to get a PA for a long time, so now I have one. Nice. Oh, wow. Yeah, pulled the trigger on it. So if you guys need a a mobile PA system, let me know, because I have one. (laughs) I'll, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. So I was late today, and I appreciate you guys starting and keeping the ball rolling. Um, kind of slept in. Not kind of, I did. My alarm went off at 6, and I didn't put my mask My I wear a CPAP. I didn't put my mask on last night, so I did not sleep well until about 4 a.m. And then I put it on, so when I woke up, I and then... My alarm went off. I was like, oh, I'll just lay here for a few more minutes. And then I fell asleep again. So that's why I was late. But I don't know if someone else is facilitating and wants to close us out. I can. I can it's kind of a close kind out. of group effort. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, Heavenly, Heavenly Father, um, Thank you for our time. Thank you for for what you spoke to us um, today. I just I just pray that our hearts would be open, our minds would be open to to just hold on to to what you're speaking through this word. Um, I just ask that that you reveal to us. Um, what what our purpose is and and how we can use even even our suffering to do your will, Father. Um, you know, reveal to us, you know, our our purpose, our designs, um, what you would have us do that aligns with your will, and that we complete your will. Because, Lord, we desire to 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 participate in your will. Um, not merely just be bystanders, but we we want to be involved. We want to um, serve in that way. Um, I just ask that you bless these men's days and um, whatever they have to do, God. Um, I just ask for your presence in all of it, um, and that. And that we would all continue to uh, focus on you, even in the mundane, God. Um, Thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. Man, Diego's internal (laughs) clock is right on. Well, 
Love you guys. Love you. Have a good day. Love you. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Have a good one. See you, boys.